This video is based on the Boston Matrix, which is a marketing theory. And uh, what it looks at is uh, the relationship between products in a product portfolio. So a product portfolio is the range of products that belong to a firm. If you think about brands such as Coca-Cola, Coca -Cola, the Coca-Cola company itself has lots and lots of different products in its portfolio. Uh, you can see within the picture, there's, there's examples there. So it's got all the different types of Cokes, but it's also got Fanta, it's got Sprite, it's got Oasis, it's got Capri Sun, uh, and, and so on. So uh, there's even more than that. If you go on the Coca Cola uh, website, you can see a lot of the products that they sell, maybe in just specific international markets as well. But what the Boston Matrix does, it allows a firm to analyze their product portfolio and consider uh, their best performing products. So how it does that is it calculates the market share of each product. Now, to calculate the market share, you can do it based on unit market share or revenue market share, and you simply find out what the sales are, either in unit sales or sales revenue, within the market. So, for example, if you're looking at the uh, Diet Coke, you look at the sales of Diet Coke within the market, and then you look at the total market unit sales for, for the fizzy drink industry or again, the total market revenue within the, uh, the fizzy drink industry. And then they can get an understanding of how well their, their product is doing in comparison to all their competitors and their products that, that, that's within their product portfolio as well. So that's one of the axes in terms of market share. They'll also look at the market growth. So as I've put there, now in terms of market growth, they have to consider the sales or the volume and how it changes over time. So they'll have to calculate a percentage change. So what they'll do is they'll work out, um, for example, one year in comparison to the other year, and they'll calculate the difference in sales. Then they'll divide that by the original, as you would with any percentage change, and then times it by 100. And that'll give you an understanding if there's high market growth within that market, or if there's low market growth. So as we can see, the axis is um, high market share, low market share, high market growth rate, and low market growth rate. Now, it's split up into four different elements. You've got, your, you've got your really, really good products, such as the star. And the star, you can see, has high market share, high market growth. And then you've got also your cash cow, which, it, okay, it's got very little growth, but its market share is, is ridiculously high. So again, it brings in a lot of revenue. Then you've got your, your, your products with, with potential, and we don't know which way it's going to go. Uh, and they're the question marks, sometimes called the problem child as well. Now, in terms of that, they've got low market share, but there's the potential of market growth. And then finally, you've got your, your worst performing products, and they're the dog products. They've got low market share, and they've got low market growth. So they're not selling at all. And there's little optimism to suggest that they will sell more in the future as well. So if we make it a little bit more theoretical, and we think about the star... So as I've put here, the businesses will embrace their stars as they'll be, as they'll be uh, able to generate high levels of revenue. They may require a little bit of investment to continue the growth, uh, but there is the understanding that uh, at some point, it, it might be in the near future, or it might be much further down the line, that they probably will eventually turn into a cash cow. But they will, like I said, they'll invest in more marketing, possibly advertising campaigns to try and just keep that growth from, uh, from happening. Now the cash cow, these products will help generate high levels of profit. You could even argue that because of how established they are in the market and how long they've been on the market, they're the ones that have really brought in the revenue for the firm. So um, in terms of the profit from, from these products, they can retain that and that can help them fund the rest of the products within the portfolio, especially, this, uh, especially the question marks. So these products are mature, they're successful, they require little investment because Generally, consumers definitely know about these products. And the only, the only little bit of marketing that might be needed is just to kind of remind customers because the chances of attracting new customers are probably low because of how long they've been in the market for. Then you've got your question mark. And now remember, your question mark has a, a low market share, and that's the problem. They've got potential of high market growth, but for whatever reason, they're not quite reaching that potential. Uh, the business will have a decision, they'll have a strategic, a strategic decision to make. Are they going to invest heavily in the marketing of the product, or are they going to let it take its natural route? If it does take its natural route, it could, it could go on to become a star, and that would definitely be helped by marketing, or it could unfortunately turn into a dog. 
and therefore have to be declined. Now, in terms of dog, as I've already said, it's the weakest product of the product portfolio. They're most likely to cause losses for the firm or just break even. So therefore, the business will most likely withdraw it. Uh, and, and because they're cutting costs of producing that product, they can, they can recuperate those costs and reinvest it into maybe their star products or even their question marks. So I've just done a, a quick example of Coca-Cola. Uh, I've used Coca-Cola because they've just got such great um, product portfolio uh, with a large variety of products, but I'm just going to focus on the actual Coke brand itself. So first of all, I mean, some of these you may argue with. I have done a little bit of research, but I'm sure there's more research to do. Uh, but in terms of, first of all, the dog product. The dog product is no longer on the market. It's already been withdrawn, and that was New Coke. I know it, very, it looks very similar to the original, but it was, it was advertised and it was marketed as this new Coke and it had a different recipe and the recipe failed. So cause it just didn't really take off. So therefore, the, um, if you look at, like, for example, the product life cycle, it had a very, very short life cycle. It was introduced and then almost withdrawn straight away because, um, like I said, customers just did not take to it. So that would definitely be an example of a dog product. The question mark is, is a really, really new question mark. It is only just being released this year, and that is their new flavours. They've got exotic mango, they've got uh, feisty cherry, and they've repackaged and changed the flavours, changed the ingredients, and they kind of expanded on the Diet Coke brand. Now, because it's brand new, that's why I've put it as a question mark. It's got the potential for market growth, and I'll explain why when I look at the Diet Coke. But at the moment, it's obviously got low market share because it's, it's, it's only just being released. So it, it could soon quickly turn into a star, which is not quite sure yet because it's only just been introduced. The cash cows are obviously the Coca-Cola. It's been on the market for a very long time. It's what Coca-Cola is all about. It's their, it's their cash cow product, which keeps bringing in revenue. Uh, it, may, it may have seen a little fall in sales recently, uh, but that's probably because of, for example, the government intervention with, uh, with sugar and the sugar tax coming in and so on. So maybe Coca-Cola's got a little bit more expensive and also there's more information to customers regarding the, the amount of sugar that is in a Coca-Cola. But th they have got little customers. And it is, like I said, just the, the, the red packaging and the look of the Coca-Cola is... It's distinguishing the market, so it will attract sales still. Now, Diet Coke, again, it's been on the market for a while, but I think it's made a bit of a comeback. And I think it's because of, again, the sugar tax. And just because that uh, customers are becoming more and more aware of, as I've said before, sugar, and they want a healthy alternative. So I think it's, it's attracted further sales of Diet Coke, and it's allowed them, which maybe they didn't expect it to grow, but because of external factors, it's, it's allowed it to have a higher market growth yet again. Now, in terms of a Boston Matrix, uh, Apple would be a good one to consider. Uh, for example, a dog, you'd have to look at it in terms of the iPod. Now, I'm going to look at Apple in much more depth when looking at the product life cycle, but the iPod is, is they're, stopping, uh, they're going to stop producing it because it's kind of being outcompeted by its own product portfolio in terms of the iPhone. You could look at it in terms of the, the cash cow. Now, you, you could probably say that's probably the Mac because the Mac's been out in the market, it's still going to, it still generates sales, it's still got high market share within that market, but the growth is very low. You could tell, you could say Star is still probably um, the, the iPhone, um, and again, possibly the iPad, and the question mark, you could look at it in terms of the iWatch, it's still got quite a lot of development to do, and they're still unsure about how, uh, how well it will do in comparison to other Apple products.